Hi, everyone, and welcome to our weekly broadcast with Sam Savage and Alex Sidorenko. Um, today, we thought we'll take a little break from discussing the 10 lame excuses for not quantifying risks and share some of the exciting developments in the technology uh, of risk that Sam has, Sam and, T and the team and uh, Tom Keelan and uh, a lot of other people have been working on. So Sam, what, what do you want to share with us today? Um, and sorry, bef before I, I keep forgetting the admin side, uh, everyone who is watching, don't forget, this is live. You know, you, are, you can and should ask uh, questions, write in the comments, you know, just say hello, <laughs> write uh, to us where you're watching from. Uh, we're broadcasting to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and uh, and Twitter. Um, this is your opportunity. Ask Sam your questions. So Sam, over to you. Uh, what, what, what did you want to talk about today? Yeah, thanks, Alex. So for people who are new to this, um, <clears throat> I'm the author of a book called The Flaw of Averages, which describes all the bad things that happen to you if you replace um, uncertainties with single numbers, usually averages. The, the example I like to use is, you you know, life is a crapshoot. You wouldn't use an average die with three and a half dots on each side. It's just so ridiculous, you wouldn't even think about it. And yet people do every day. So the solution is Monte Carlo simulation. The problem is that uh, number one, you have to buy Monte Carlo software. Uh, no, you don't anymore because Excel has gotten so powerful you can use it almost straight out of the box. But the other big thing is that the average decision maker would have no idea how to generate the random numbers required to run a Monte Carlo. And that's a real killer, right? And yet, I will bet, Alex, that all of the people watching this or who will watch it in the future. I'll bet all of them are using light bulbs. And I'll bet almost none of them know how to generate the electricity for those light bulbs. What's yep. wrong with this picture? Why can't we do the same with probability distributions? And at my nonprofit, probabilitymanager.org, we have developed the, the current standards for the probability power grid. But let me show it to you in action. Let's share this Excel sheet. Some of you have perhaps seen this already. This is a model with some uncertainty in it. We are um, uh, creating a, an e-commerce website and we have four web pages, the accounts page, the products page, the order page, the fulfillment page. Um, we're uncertain about how long these will take. And of course we don't go live until the last one goes live. There's only one formula in the whole worksheet. It's a max statement. Um, the bars here, um, are done with conditional formatting. And if you don't know about conditional formatting, well, that's probably more important than anything Alex and I have to say today, rush off and find out about conditional format. Anyway, um, this file is available for download at our, at our nonprofit. But now imagine what happens here. The boss comes in and says, when will we go live? Now, let's imagine that this is not our first rodeo. We've got a lot of data on these uncertainties. And it now has been turned into actionable, like Monte Carlo simulation in the data, right? Marshall McLuhan, the, the Canadian philosopher said, you know, the, the medium is the message. Well, for us, the medium is the Monte Carlo. So watch what I'm going to do here. Think of this as a light bulb. I'm going to select the places I want to put the electricity. I'm going to run out to probabilitymanagement.org where I have a library of uncertainties. Oh, and excuse me, wait a second, I'm not sure. Uh, I, think, I think it went to yeah, I've got to a share different screen. screen. Just yeah. a sec. Um, let's get to uh, probabilitymanager.org. Let's see, is that being shared now? Yes. And, okay, one second. Okay, 
Um, and, and so I go down to development times. This is a library of pre-packaged Monte Carlo trials. Um, yeah. And I just want our listeners to, to, to imagine where you could just find in the future, this is the future of risk management. In the future, you will be able to find different data sets online, right click, get the URL, and just you know, copy paste it into your worksheets, into your business, business plans or investment proposals. So, so I'm going to do that now. I right clicked on this thing that sucks the, the distributions into my clipboard. I go back over here. I click on SIP input. Now, just so you understand the nomenclature, SIP stands for Stochastic Information Packet. I'm going to use what's on the clipboard. And um, so here, what I see is I've actually got more variables than I need. I have marketing down at the bottom, which I don't need. So I'm going to select all four of those and click OK. Oh my gosh. As we say in the US, we're not in Kansas anymore. That is from the, a, a reference to the Wizard of Oz movie with um, from the late 30s. Uh, wonderful movie where this little girl gets hit on the head in a tornado. She's in Kansas. Everything is black and white. And she lands, of course, she's having a dream, but she lands in Oz where everything turns to color. And she says to her dog, uh, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> so we are in a completely different world here, folks. Those much are more numbers. colorful world, much more colorful world, much more. Those are not numbers anymore. Look, we're in a multiverse with a thousand parallel universes. Here, there's universe one, universe two, universe three. And, and these, little, these little pictures here are pictures of the distribution. All right. And um, there's a lot to parse here. So um, I can also show, by the way, there's metadata. So I can go in here and and show the mean, which is, oh yeah, we go live in a 10 weeks, apparently, if you put in 10 weeks, right? The maximum of 10, 10, 10, and 10 is 10, right? But now uh, I'm going to determine now the chance that we finish in less than or equal to 10 weeks. And I have to learn a new button, the chance of whatever button, and so the chance that that formula bears that relationship to that number is full, full screen the video if you're having difficulty seeing what's on the screen. And I'm just uh, saying that to everybody sure, who's watching us. Sure. So it was 15%. Okay. And now the boss says, oh no, I promised the client 10 weeks. Well, what if we go to 11 weeks? Then we'll be all right. Well, if you consider a 24% chance of success, all right. Look, I can also find the average here. So um, let's put an average over there. That means if I average over all the universes, uh, how long will it take? And the answer is 14.8 weeks. Wow. So now let's stop and catch up. What has happened here? First of all, First of all, when we started this quest at probabilitymanagement.org, the idea was to store actual Monte Carlo trials. And you can do that, but that would be a lot of trials. What's happening now is I want you to think about the probability power grid, right? And the implications are vast, okay? I can't really get them all out. The first is, oh, anyone can use Monte Carlo if somebody ahead of time 
yep. create the distribution and did, think did the all work. the publicly available data, commodity prices, weather, <laughs> climate change. These are not proprietary. All these things could be available in this format, right? Yep. So first, it means that anyone that anyone can access Monte Carlo with two keystrokes. Oh, get the stochastic information packet and then use the chance of whatever button or the average button. Okay. But more than that, we can now network. We can now network simulations together. So it, at the central power plant, they generate the distribution of demand for the new product. Yeah, but then we've got investment decisions, uh, marketing decisions, uh, production decisions. All these models can be built separately and then linked together for overall, like a consolidated risk statement. Mm -hmm. Now. Mm -hmm. Here comes the most amazing, the most amazing thing that um, I finally figured out how to express this properly in the most shocking way that will grasp your attention. So recent technologies now, instead of storing the Monte Carlo trials, we can express up to 100 million Monte Carlo trials in 88 bytes. And you're saying, well, that's impossible by information theory. Shannon's theory of information says if you had 100 million numbers, you couldn't compress them to 88 bytes. No, that's not what we're saying. You start with an expression of a Monte Carlo run, and you can express almost any, any run of up to 100 million trials with 88 bytes. And I'm going to be showing how that works. But before I get into the technological end of it, um, I want to show show you how you can apply it quickly. Yeah. Well, let, let's just let's just recap for the benefit of everybody everybody who's watching us live. And you know, again, reminder: ask questions. You know, make comments. Um, add comments to to this broadcast, um, and to everybody who's who will watch later. This is a huge you know, huge shift in uh, the way risk management teams operate. Essentially, uh, you give the ability to create this, uh, I don't know, for some reason, after probability management uh, conferences, for some reason, every time I think of risk managers who generate the distributions, I think of a basement in Pentagon, because you had a lot of speakers from Pentagon sharing how they sit in basements and generate distribution. So I have that analogy in my head, but essentially, the, the the future of at least part of the risk team will be dedicated to collecting, cleaning, preparing data, and doing all the hard mathematical stuff behind you know closed doors with only auditors looking after them. And by the way, as you love saying that all of this is 100% auditable, which makes everybody's life a lot easier. Um, so risk managers at least part of the team becoming the generators that create those probability distributions and then converting them to a format, to a form uh, so simple and light that is then given to everybody else in the organization and basically turns any business plan, any forecast, any investment proposal, any model into a stochastic model to overcome the flow of averages. Uh, you know, in my mind, this is you know, this is if not if if that's not a revolution in risk management, I don't know what is. And, and of course, I have a name for it. I call it chanceification. That's the title of my new new book, where electrification replaces systems that run on fossil fuels with those that run on electricity. Chanceification replaces calculations that run on numbers with those that run on probabilities. Yeah. And as Alex mentioned, they're auditable. Okay. In fact, they're like four A's. I should have them up here. They're, they're arithmetical. Oh my gosh. I can add two Monte Carlo variables together. Think of it just, you're adding them trial by trial. Well, that's a new Monte Carlo. Well, duh. Okay. They're actionable. 
in that in that the Monte Carlo that comes out of this, the distribution that comes out of this, goes into this. <laughs> you know, it's like a number. They are auditable. So I can go back. Suppose I did run 100 million trials. You can't do 100 million in Excel. But but this, the open data standard will work in Python or R. So I go to the 100 millionth trial or back one, I don't know, 999,999,999, that trial. Everyone in Python, in R, in Excel, on an abacus will get the same trial value to 15 decimal places. Um, so, yes, it is really revolutionary. And part of this revolution, so the straight Monte Carlo trials, I, I think I really should show another example there so everybody understands what we're talking about. Um, the straight Monte Carlo trials, in an electric analogy, think of it as direct current. And so pardon me while I run out and grab a file that does dice. So here's the approach of, oh yes, we stored 10,000 Monte Carlo trials of dice. And here we have an index statement pointing into those. Here we have a data table. This is a, this is a native Excel file. You can download this off our website. Uh, there are no macros. You know, send it to a billion of your closest friends. W when I point to this cell, um, it runs, runs 10,000 trials and, you know, boom, pretty damn fast, right? So um it's running off of the actual trials and so this is 30,000 trials and you know when the accountants find out you're doing Monte Carlo simulation they're going to freak out oh no it's so uncertain and you say to the accountants no 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 these are actually uh, uh data down here 30 30,000 numbers you guys are good at auditing stuff you audit the data and then come back and bother us when you're done. So that gets rid of the uh, accounts. It's a deterministic model. Okay. Yeah. So now that was direct current. Now I want to show you alternating current. Alternating current is where with just a few bytes, we can specify virtually any probability distribution. And, oh, yes, first... People may say, like, you know, how, ma how many distributions are there in the world? And the answer is, of course, there are an infinite number of probability distributions in the world. Um, this is a chart created by uh, Professor William and Mary, uh, Larry Loomis, Lemus, sorry, uh, Larry Lemus, who has mapped out all these classical distributions and you can see how they're all connected to one another and so here, if i click on them well let's click on this one over here standard so if i if i click on any of these things i get a bunch of algebra now let me tell you as people introduce electricity you know there's always the fear that that people get electric, electrocuted and a lot of the pr around starting the power grid was trying to scare people about electrocution um edison did that to try to scare people away from using westinghouse as alternate current well we have a similar problem here it's not the fear of electrocution it's the fear of what i call post-traumatic statistics disorder or ptsd so any of these formulas i click on and there are hundreds of them any of them uh, could induce PTSD. <laughs> yeah. right? you just click on any of them and you just get, oh, no, not that. Okay, but it's much worse than that. So this chart has 76 distributions. There are another 230 that didn't fit on the chart. I mean, that, that, that's 300. Yeah, but remember, there are an infinite number of distributions. And 
So a few years ago, this acquaintance of mine, very smart guy, Tom Keelan, has a PhD in decision analysis uh, from Stanford and has had a long uh, and illustrative career, illustrious career uh, in, uh, in consulting. He came up with yet a new distribution that was just based straight on data. And my, my first thought was, oh no, just what I need is another distribution. I, I've got hundreds of these. I don't know which one to use. And now you're saying there's another one. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw the rest of these out and just keep the one distribution because it's one size fits all. It's like the USB port for distributions. It is called the Metalog distribution. And I want to demonstrate it for you quickly. Now, for those who understand the, want to understand the mathematics, there are many, many sources for this. And I'm going to dig into it in more detail at the end of our session. But, but uh, that's for people who do not have PTSD. Um, yeah. So the, the, there is one person on YouTube, is, uh, Ilya is asking, is Metalog the distribution behind the 88 bytes for 100 million trials? And uh, the answer is yes. And uh, more to come with a little right. bit more detail right. exactly. at the end. Exactly. Uh, so, sorry, Sam, before you go into that, can I quickly just, yeah. for the benefit of our listeners, uh, remind everybody that the the very idea that we're discussing is that risk community, I think, over time will transition into two categories, the users and the generators. <coughs> sorry. Still recovering from some weird virus. Um, and... The users are the ones that are taking the ready-made distributions and <coughs> sorry, I, I thought I, I thought as I, I switched off my mic when I went coughing. Um, the the users are the ones taking the distributions already created, pre-created for them, and then they take it and integrate into different decision models. They have a more kind of you know political economic um, uh, cultural role of convincing the decision makers to switch from st uh, from deterministic to stochastic decision making, um, uh, but they don't need to know the complexity of creating the distributions because for that purpose there are the second bucket, the second ca second category called uh, generators, and just like there are people that generate electricity and bring it to your homes and you don't really need to understand how the whole process oper works and how complex the generation process process is the generators do exactly the same you know mathematical magic to create the distributions so what sam is now going to show is how not only the generators create the magic but also what um tom killen created even for the generators, it saves so much time and space and effort um, in creating that that magic for them. So, Sam, back back to you. Yes. Hey, and and uh, Alex, our pictures are over the lower left corner of the screen. Can you move those to the right? Because I'm going to want to show some things to people here. They're, they're, at least on my screen, they're blocking out the lower left. They, they are, and I don't think I can move them. I can. The the best I can do is I can move them to the side. Oh, that's good. That'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to, um, uh, very quickly take you to the Metalogs page of the, of the nonprofit, because we've tried to encapsulate the most important features of the Metalog. If you go to metalogs.org, you will find Tom Keeler's page with way more stuff, but I recommend starting with our stuff. And in fact, there's a wonderful video of Tom here describing this. Many more things at metalogs.org, but you also might just start with uh, with the Wikipedia article on Metalogs. And with a few formulas, you can fit virtually anything and I will, I will, again, go into more detail at the end of this presentation. But so number one, 
the mental log is a mathematical tour de force. Okay. Um, I think it's going to usher in a family of other similar things. It's, it's th think of it like a Taylor series or a Fourier series for probability distributions. And there are other such um, systems with which you could do this. Tom's system is very elegant, very well worked out. And on top of that, he has built, so from a theoretical side, it's very interesting. But from a practical standpoint, he has created really elegant spreadsheet models that um, implement it. And so when you implement this, and there are several ways, there's a lot to parse here, folks. Let's see if I can blow up my screen. Oh, no. Oops. So, so let me let me just crank this up here. So if I go to the left, um, one way to access the metalog is to put in percentiles and the associated quantiles, they're called. So what, what this is, for these input parameters, 99% of the time, the number is 85 or less. 10% of the time, the number is 8 or less. 90% of the time, it's 50 or less, and so on. And on top of that, let, let's call this variable uh, test now. And... Notice it says test cumulative over on the right now. And this one was an unbounded distribution. But I'm going to put in um, a semi-bounded with a lower bound. It defaulted to zero. I'm going to, I'm going to make that number two. Okay. All right. Um, good. So now let's shrink this down. That's a little too far. Um, and this has specified some magic parameters that will recreate this distribution. Now that's half of getting the 100 million trials stored in 88 bytes. You're going to see the other half in a second. So I am now, now that I've selected this, I'm going to click the Metalog button and I'm going to say, I want to go to Excel. I, I, I click that button. I want to paste to Excel. So I'm going to go to a blank Excel sheet. This is beta test. So, you know, I'm working without a net. And I click paste to Excel. And it says, where do you want the distribution? I want it in C1. Where do you want the spark line? You'll see what that is in a second. And then where do you want your random cell? So we need a random number generator. I'm going to put it there. And what are the seeds? So it automatically put a start variable seed of one. These four seeds, these four things to fill out, drive the HDR random number generator developed by Doug Hubbard that is going to drive the metalog. So those are the two technologies. See, it says HDR down here. Now, if I click OK and hold my breath, I think everything will... Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. We're not in Kansas anymore. Hold on a second. So I let's remember what I did. I specified the random 
variable over here by fitting it to data. And you will see that you can fit distributions that are not described at all in the 300 distribution at Larry Lemus's site, bimodal distributions. So I clicked one button to suck this into memory and went back here, I pasted it and look, there's a comment statement. Oh yeah, it's called test, it has five terms, the lower bound is two. So you can use as many terms as you like in a metalog, but by and large, 16 is the maximum we would ever think you would use. This one uses five, and the more you fit, the, the better fit you have. Now remember, this is for the, Alex talked about the two classes of risk managers. For the generators. The generators. To worry about. And the consumers. This is for the generator to worry about. But now, let me do something like, for example, what if I took that variable and I squared it? And then I said, what's the chance that the square of that variable is greater than 600? Then I pop up chance calc and I say, what's the chance that the square of that ridiculous variable is greater than 600? The answer is 78%. Actually, I knew that. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, how about greater than 500? 84%. I knew that as well. All right. Now, I think it's, yes, it's magic. The, where do the 100 million variants come from? So, Doug Hubbard's generator is a uniform generator required to run the metalog. A uniform generator is like a spinner. It goes between zero and one. In Excel, native Excel, that would be a RAND formula. By the way, this model does not have any macros in it. I can send this to anyone. The chance calc macro created this model. But this runs by itself. Here is the formula for Doug's generator, which, by the way, has um, it's a big hairy formula, but it's just a formula in Excel. And let, let me take you back over here. Yeah. So wh while you're doing this, let me just quickly re recap. Um, so essentially, what this means is that the generators in your companies now have the tools that allow them to produce the distributions and not send you clunky Excel files that you need to add to your existing models and all of the complexity associated with that. But instead, it's literally almost like a copy paste you know, over a corporate messenger or email. And uh, that data is transported into your business plans and, and instantaneously almost turns your business plan into a risk model. Well, well that's exactly right. And, and look, do it in R, do it in Python, do it in Excel. So for example, the at-risk and crystal ball users or any other, any other simulation in Excel can use the metalog as I was just showing and just paste it in. Now, here's a page at R at probabilitymanagement.org Alex can get you the links. This describes the HDR random number generator. And the important thing here is it's got to be cross-platform. And we do not want to disappoint our billion Excel users. So we had to, we had to limit it to work on Excel. And configured to run in Excel the rubber band breaks at 100 million. And actually, I don't think the rubber band breaks. I think what happens is this thing passes a, a set of tests called the die harder tests. And beyond 100 million, we're concerned about how random the things would be. 
So we typically just limit it to 100 million. So you've got basically for the metalog 16 things called A coefficients and two bounds, an upper and lower bound. That makes 18 numbers. The HDR generator has four seeds. Very important, we have four separate seeds, as I can describe sometime in the future. It's really great. Um, for example, if we're all looking at the price of oil, all of us want to write se se different simulations, but we want the same trial of the price of oil. It's not the same, we're, we're building oil wells, right? Or we're, we're simulating oil wells, and we don't want just the same log normal distribution, we want the same trial. So we can put in seeds that make sure we get the same set of 100 million. Um, so uh, that, so we've got the 22 numbers total, 18 plus four, four bytes per number is 88 bytes. Now, I want to say a little more about the metal log for those who are intrigued because um, again, think of it as the Taylor series of probability distributions. Oh, and I, I, I understand, Alex, that, uh, that Tom is going to be lecturing on this at Risk Awareness Week. That's right. At and the uh, Risk, yep. Yeah. Well, no, go ahead. Then at the Risk Awareness Week 2022 in October this year, Tom is going to do a workshop. So use this opportunity to ask him questions, see the author actually do and explain uh, the the metalogs. So you know, don't miss that session. You can already sign up for it at the 2022.riskawarenessweek.com. And and I talked with Tom about this. I plan to discuss what I just showed you here today as well. And Tom should be sandwiched just on the list, sandwiched between my two sessions. I mean, I'm gonna do a session on chance calc, right? Where I'll just barely mention the metalog. Then Tom will talk about the metalog. And then at the end, I'll follow up with, oh, so many other amazing things the metalog can do. Um, so I wanna just run very quickly. Uh, it can fit virtually any known distribution and bounded or unbounded. Just let's just look at a normal distribution for a second. So look at the number of terms down on the right. Two, four, six, eight, ten terms. At eight terms, the normal distribution's own mother could not tell the normal apart from a metalog. At 10 terms, they would pass a DNA test. It isn't like an approximation. <laughs> it's like fits like, a, okay, how about a log normal? Oh, same thing. How about one of these things? I don't know what this thing is. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, how about what it's bounded? Oh my God, it fits perfectly. Wow. Right, well, you know, mathematics is important stuff. Now, I wanna show you, um, a distribution, an unknown distribution. So Tom is a fly fisherman, catch and release fly fisherman. You're looking at a ginormous steelhead trout. And he just, for the fun of it, found data on 3,000 steelhead trout and plotted their distribution. And what he showed here was he's now using various terms of metalog. The number is small, but let me just say, you know, uh, two, four, six, eight. When he gets to 10 terms, it looks clearly bimodal. And he didn't know why that would be, but he called the fish scientists and they explained why it was. It's bimodal because steelhead trout are very much like their cousins, the salmon, with one huge exception. Well, they both spawn upstream and then swim down to the ocean to fatten up. The difference is for salmon, sex is fatal, 100%. They die, okay? With steelhead trout, some of them survive and swim down to the ocean a second time. 
oh my goodness, a second trip. And that's what's showing up here. Now, I want to say something even more profound here that I don't know how, how I mean, really profound. I put a picture of this in my chancification book. And I just put the metalog. I didn't put the histogram in. And Tom said, show the histogram as well so you can see how the metalog fits the histogram. I said, great, I'll do that. So I created a histogram from the same data. I knew the data was bimodal. And it took me 15 minutes to find a bin width and a starting bin for which I could see the bimodality. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. knew it was bimodal. Do you think I would have spent 15 minutes looking for bimodality if I hadn't known it was there? Of course not. I would have fit the data and said, okay, it's log normal, next yeah. distribution. So, so let's, uh, let's just repeat the message here. Um, and that's the message for the generators, uh, um, not really for the users. And I think the whole conversation now moving towards the generator space. Um, the, the message is because we use kind of pre-existing and usually a small selection of common distributions to represent our data, um, we lose a lot of important messages when we si you know, simplify or estimate our data, our historical data, um, using existing distributions. You, we just kind of, we pigeonhole our data into log normal or um, Pareto or Weibull or so, something so, something along the line, some of the common distributions. And what Metalog allows you, you generators to do is to not lose any of the important points in, in the data and kind of use the whole the, the whole historical baggage, so to say, of a distribution. Um, and it is data centric. Look, do not forget this. The theory of probability and statistics is powerful and elegant. And so is the steam locomotive. And they were developed at the same time. I teach in the Stanford Engineering School where we have not taught steam locomotion for decades, maybe a century. I don't know. No, no, we probably taught it in the fifties, but we do, but we still teach steam era statistics and we shouldn't. <laughs> and all those 300 distributions are all left over from the steam era. Okay. Um, that's, I'll tell you what, the metalog distribution has beautiful theoretical properties. That means that even people who love steam era statistics can love the metal log. So now I want to sort of show you how we get to the 100 million trials of anything. And this is the what we call the 3.0 standard in which we store those 22 numbers that I told you about. We wrap them in JSON, which is a structured database language for the web with metadata, right? So this is a, this is, by the way, the first F, the first collaboration I've ever done that required three people and three different organizations. So I'm the executive director of probabilitymanagement.org. When I saw the Metalog, at first I said, I don't need another distribution. <laughs> and then I said, oh my God, here's a problem we can solve because I know it's an unsolved problem, the sum of IID log normals, but I know what the answer is. It has to be a metal log because a metal log will fit anything. And Tom and I figured out how to solve an unsolved mathematical problem. Then the third level of enlightenment for me was, oh my God, the metalog is the USB port of distributions. I can throw out all the rest, which is what I've done. They're now sitting on the curb waiting for bulk trash pickup, but no one seems to want them. Okay, so then that was the metalog. Third on the list here is Doug Hubbard's random number generator, which again is the spinner that's gonna drive everything. And you have to understand kind of the relationship between these three. I. 
I saw Hubbard's generator first. And in fact, we adopted it into our tools at the nonprofit in 2016, right? The Metalog came a little later. So just for the, for the people, the statisticians, or even the non-statisticians, how do we generate a random number which has a given cumulative distribution? So the function on the right, and let's see if I can, uh, pointer, laser pointer, okay. So this is X going in this direction. This is the probability that the number X is less than or particular, less than or equal to a particular number. So there's a 50% chance that X is less than that red thing there. There's like a 77% chance that X is less than that green thing down there. This is known as the cumulative distribution. How do I generate something with this cumulative distribution? The answer is I spin a spinner here. I spin a spinner. And whatever number comes out of the spinner, I put in here and I run F backwards. It's called the F inverse method. So if I spin a 0.25 or less, see if I spin 0.25, which happens 25% of the time, or I mean 25% of the time or less, I spin a 0.25 or less, right? Well, if I spin a 0.25, I get the number over here that X is less than, well, let's go straight over to 0.25, it's right about here, that X is less than 25% of the time. So it's really just like a tautology. But I didn't understand this till I was 60 or something. And I've been spent my whole life doing Monte Carlo. And I just never really knew how they did this. But it's how they do it. In Excel, there is a function called norm inv for this very reason. We're running the inverse of f. It's the f inverse method. So if I put a rand function into norm inv with a given mean and standard deviation, I generate a random number. Now let's remember that Doug's generator also runs in Excel, but you can put seeds into it. It's repeatable and auditable, unlike RAND. Okay, so now I have a ridiculous analogy. Sometimes I think the more ridiculous analog an analogy, the more likely it will capture your imagination. So I want to start I with the following analogy. I have generated 10,000 normal random variants. Just think of 10,000 of them, right? Suppose that's what I want. I want 10,000 normal variables with a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. And in this analogy, imagine that that were a quart of milk. I bet you haven't seen this analogy today already. Okay, so 10,000 normal random variables is a quart of milk. Then norm in is powdered milk. And the 10,000 uniforms, either RAND or the HDR, is a quart of water. Pour the quart of water into the powdered milk you get a quart of milk. Now, frankly, powdered milk isn't as good as real milk, but I've already shown you here that the powdered distributions are indistinguishable from the real ones. You wouldn't know. Now, I want to point out um, then in Excel, you would say norm in of RAND, or you could substitute Hubbard spinner, whatever, with mean and sigma. And in Excel, there are maybe 10 of these functions. So you've got powdered coffee, powdered eggs. Great. What is the metalog in this analogy? It is one power powder, one, one little package. If it's milk you want, we got cow, goat, or yak. 
Well, or zebra, eggs, chicken, ostrich, or platypus, right? We have, we have liquids in here that haven't been invented yet. If you mix sulfuric acid with mustard, for example, it'll kill you if you eat it, but we got it. <laughs> it's in there. How about the HDR generator? So in the 1980s, there was a very droll comedian in the United States called Stephen Wright. I don't think he's active anymore, but he's still a very funny guy. Um, he had these one-liner jokes like, oh, like the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. If you think about a mouse trap, right? The first one gets killed by the mouse trap, and the second one gets the cheese, right? So he had one of his my favorite jokes was, I bought some powdered water. I just don't know what to add to it. The HDR generator, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is powdered water. <laughs> you put in four numbers and you get up to 100 million predefined spins. You'll get the same spins every time on every platform to 15 decimal places. Amazing. And so the 3.0 SIP math standard mixes these together. And you go from having potentially millions of numbers to, well, it could be, you, if you really want it, you just spit out 22 numbers. And in some instances, you might. But what we're going to do is put them in into JSON, this structured language, so that applications know how to apply those numbers when they get them, right? And um, so that you're looking at the top part of the JSON, which is where the powdered water is stored. And you can see um, the various seeds for the random number generator down here. And then I take you on to the powdered platypus eggs. And here are the coefficients. There aren't any bounds for this for some reason, you know, and, and there you are. Okay, so um, that kind of sums it up. Um, as if you can sum it up, it's just too profound to be summed up in one sitting. Um, and there's a look, bunch of look, stuff I haven't described. Uh, which, by the way, you, you will at the upcoming Risk Awareness Week. Um, so again, join uh, the both Sam's workshops are now online and you can already register for them. So don't miss that opportunity. And Alex, I, I do want to finish with something here. Sure. So I showed you this thing called chance calc. Let me define probability distribution for you. Probability distribution, nine syllables that trigger post-traumatic statistics disorder or PTSD. Use one syllable, chance. And in fact, we have entered a new age here. I call it the chance age. Remember the example we started with, it's a scheduling example. And the boss comes in and says, you know, when are we gonna go live? That's typically the fork in the road to hell because you say to the boss, will you settle for an average? The boss says, you know, because you say, I don't know how long it'll take. Um, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how long it'll take. I got these four pro four different tasks. I, marketing, I mean, or, or the, you know, whatever it is, the product page, the customer page. And so the boss then is going to say, give me a number. This is where the, the fork in the road to hell comes. And so then you say, would you settle for an average? Boss says, sure. So you plug in 10, 10, 10, and 10, and you say, we'll be done in 10. In the chance age, when the boss says, give me a number, you say, what do you want it to be? Here are your chances. This is a vast change in mentality. And Alex, you know, I appreciate all your support in helping shift the world to this new way of looking at business.
And the reason why I do that is because for the last three years, I felt a lot of pain when that's exactly what bosses told me. Um, asking for single numbers and uh, a lot of senior people um, really restrictive, scared, um, unsure about switching from deterministic to stochastic, stochastic thinking, just because everyone is so used to the whole professions, the whole management theories, textbooks are built on this notion that you can somehow uh, forecast the best possible realistic scenario, as opposed to appreciating the uncertainty surrounding the future. Um, our, our whole world is built on basically guessing the future instead of just living in an uncertain uncertainty, as uh, I, I think we should. And uh, the message to everybody who's uh, who's watching us, uh, if you are a generator, uh, do research and investigate metalogs, HDR, random number generators, and the SIPMath uh, 3.0 standard because that will make your life to generate distributions so much easier, quicker, and re significantly reduce your model error. Um, and for the users, I think the message that we're trying to convey, even though I, I appreciate that this session today has been probably way overwhelming for majority of the users out there, uh, the message we're trying to say is that Behind the scenes, people, very smart people, are working on simplifying and making this electricity, this probability distributions, more accessible and simpler and easier and cheaper to transfer. And what you will soon see, a lot more distributions coming your way. And I think our key message is keep an open mind. You know, whenever your risk manager, your, your risk generator comes to you next, saying we can actually easily plug in distributions into this decision model, you know, don't, don't block it just because you don't understand it. Like you wouldn't block uh, switching on lights in a dark room because you don't understand how electricity works. Um, there are smart people that are working on making sure um, probability distributions are accessible to everyone who needs them. And a lot more people need them that we realize because a lot of the business value is wasted and um, not saved, overspent, because we basically use inherently flawed methods for our decision making. And, and please visit probabilitymanagement.org. There's one of the things I want to say is that so many wonderful volunteers have contributed not to like making the organization run, but bringing us bringing us knowledge. Tom Keelan and the Metalog, Doug Hubbard and his generator, many others were working in the areas of military readiness and risk management. And um, we have examples of uh, healthcare management, looking at managing COVID surges. Um, there are just so many interesting areas where this could apply. And quite a few of them will actually be showcased just like all the previous years, because you know, Sam and I have been um, presenting those things at the Risk Awareness Week for the last you know, three or four years. Again, in Risk Awareness Week 2022, there will be, if I'm not mistaken, four sessions or five sessions showing different types of applications where businesses have already switched to stochastic decision making and realized amazing value from doing that. Yes. And by the way, some of those, some of those businesses, like financial engineering, switched in like the 1960s you know starting with the with the modern portfolio theory of harry markowitz everyone used volatility and covariance matrices and then in the late 70s uh with with derivative uh, uh instruments like options and futures and stuff like that people really went to monte carlo um, and in the financial engineering industry and in the insurance industry, the, the, the good ones have been doing something like this for decades, but it has not been open to the public. This would be like a giant power plant generating its own electricity internally.
mm-hmm. you have to go to the power plant. If you want to read your book, oh yeah, come on down to the power plant. We have plenty of light. No, as opposed to sending it in an open standard out over a probability network to anyone in Excel, Python, R, or an abacus. Yep. Um, so huge progress. And as I, as I mentioned to you last year, uh, you come up with new and better ways of transferring probability data quicker than the business can adopt it. Um, and so I, 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 I'm waiting for that, uh, uh, I don't know, breaking point where this just becomes mass adoption, like, I don't know, 3D building design. Uh, now is a common thing. You know, people used to draw building designs and engineering designs with their pencils and the rulers. Then they switched to 2D and now it's 3D and then probably soon it will be all virtual and added, uh, added reality where you can actually just feel and touch and be inside, uh, in, inside the design. Um, so this is exactly, I, I think this is exactly the journey that will happen with probability management. That's what we believe. So thanks, Alex. So good to be on your show here. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, everyone, for watching and uh, see you next week.